Okay, so I'm going to uh, talk about object-oriented programming. So how many people here are comfortable with uh, the ideas of object-oriented programming? Just let's drop hold. Okay, so maybe less than half. Uh, so the goals of this lecture are twofold. One is to introduce to everyone what object-oriented programming is, uh, try to describe why it's useful, and then uh, talk about how we implement it in Python and show how easy it is to create objects in, objects in Python and show you guys that all along we've been dealing with objects in Python without really knowing it. And then the, to show some basic examples. So instead of object-oriented prog programming, we, we can do something called procedural programming, where we basically, uh, basically write out a bunch of, of functions and essentially, our program or our code would look like uh, a bunch of uh, functions that we call in a row where we feed maybe the output of one function into the input of another function and keep doing this until we've achieved what we want to. But you can see that in really complicated programs, this could get quite unruly um, very quickly because there's a lot of shared variables here. We're always passing uh, maybe the... the maybe var1 is always used and we have to re-pass it into each function that we call. And so our code could get, could, could get quite large um, if we follow this paradigm. So an, an alternative to this is called object-oriented programming. So what is object-oriented programming? Um, so there's a few ways we could, we could uh, figure this out. One is to ask an, ex an expert. So uh, I went down to Shattuck and Ask this guy, but he didn't really say anything useful. So uh, another option is to ask Wikipedia. So Wikipedia tells me that object-oriented programming is a programming paradigm that uses objects, data structures consisting of data fields and methods together with their interactions to design applications and computer programs. Uh, programming te techniques may include features such as data abstraction, encapsulation, modularity, polymorphism, and inheritance. So. Okay, maybe I don't really know what that means, but okay, I get this idea of objects. So we have some sort of object that has both data structures and methods. So uh, data structures of data, um, methods of functions, and somehow they interact. Okay. So uh, objects are like animals. This is courtesy of Brad Senko. Uh, they know how to do stuff, like eat and sleep. They can interact with others, like make children, and they have characteristics, like height, weight, color, etc. So here, here's Oski, he's an animal. He has characteristics, he has a color, he has a height, he has a weight. He does things, he can eat, sleep, growl, cheer. Apparently he also drinks through his eyeball. <laughs> and he has interactions, so he has parents, siblings, friends, etc. Okay, so an object is a programming structure that allows you to group together variables or characteristics and functions, so doing things, into one nice tidy package. So instead of procedural programming where you have to kind of independently define our data and then pass that into a bunch of functions. This allows us to group everything together and it's a very useful, um, more efficient way of, of programming. So in Python, to do object-oriented programming, we have a notion of a class. Uh, so a class is basically an object in Python. So we could have a class called bear. Uh, it takes in variables such as color, height, weight, and it has functions, it can do stuff. So within a class, variables are referred to as attributes, and functions are referred to as methods. I'll probably mess that up at some point during this lecture, but this is kind of the standard way that you talk about um, characteristics and functions within a class. We can also create instances, which are realizations of a class. So if our class is bear, we could make an instance, which is Yogi. 
and Yogi could have some specific attributes and some specific methods. Uh, we could also create another instance of the bear class called Winnie. Winnie's maybe a little shorter, but for some reason heavier. I don't know if I believe that. <laughs> um, so what's, how do we create objects in Python? We start by basically saying class and class name. <coughs> and of course we have our doc string, as always. And some statements right after uh, uh, this first line basically are only executed when the class is defined. And within that, we can have uh, global class variables, so any variables that are uh, listed right after the class definition uh, are going to be global, and we'll show some examples of that. And then methods. So just the way that we defined functions before, we can define methods within a class. And notice here the indent indentation. Everything here is within uh, the class statement. Uh, of course, these methods should also have doc strings, but you know, they don't in this example. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how we make a class called Bear in Python. It's as easy as saying class Bear. Um, note that we do not need parentheses, um, but these are useful when a class is derived from other classes. And in the next le lecture, Josh will talk, uh, will give a little more details about how that works. So uh, we have the class bear, and when we make a new instance of the bear, we want it printed that the bear class is now defined. So this is only sorry, this this is only executed when the when the class is defined. Uh, so we could. Uh, equate an object A to the class bear, but this really isn't too useful. It just, A is now just the class bear. What we really want to do is say A equals bear with open and close parentheses. So this instanti instantiates an object of class bear. So it's a bear instance. Okay. So how do we create, delete, and access the uh, methods within a class. Uh, so here we have our, our bear class. Um, so we could basically, anytime you use the, uh, the period after the name uh, of an instance of the class, uh, we can access what's in, inside of that object. So a.name would be an, uh, an attribute called name inside of, uh, of A, which is an instance of a, a bear class. Of course, we haven't defined that in the class, so we get the trace back there. We could, uh, we can create uh, the name just by, def by defining it as OSCE. We can give uh, our bear a color, brown. And we can, uh, just as before, we can delete any of these, uh, these attributes. So I get traced back again when I do a name because I delete it back. Uh, okay, so methods are defined really much in, this, in the, the same way that normal functions are. So here's our, our bear class again. And if we want method, we simply do def, the name of the method. And notice that uh, self always has to be uh, the first, um, the first thing that's passed into that function. So any any uh, any method within a class has to have the first argument be self. If that's not the case, you'll get a trace back. Okay, so here uh, class bear has a method say hello, and when we call that method, it prints hello world I'm a bear. Okay, so uh, so this first sorry this first line is only executed this first print statement is only executed when we define a class bear. 
So once we run this code, it says the bear class is not defined. Um, when we uh, instantiate a new bear into an object A, um, this print statement is not executed. Okay, so we can, just like uh, when attributes are accessed um, through this uh, dot, we can access the uh, methods the same way. So a dot say hello is a method, but if we give parentheses, it'll actually execute that method, and it'll say hello world, I'm a bear. So this should look very familiar because you've gotten used to uh, basically saying object dot something. So everything you've been dealing with so far are um, are these objects. Yes. Uh, what is that? Is this selfie? Sorry. The self. Uh, yeah. So class. self. Uh, so in, in defining class. So this is a cl uh, basically uh, an object. A bare object. So anything, any method within this class definition uh, is can use uh, either methods or attributes that are also defined within that class. So I'll show you in a bit. We can have self dot name, which would be the name of the bear. And so it's basically just standard practice that self is the first thing that's that's fed into any method within that class because it's looking for anything that is, that is also defined, any attribute or method that is defined in that class. So there are also uh, special uh, methods in Python. Um, I'll talk about the init method. So it's basically these special methods um, are run in certain cases. So Josh will talk about a few more, but I'll talk about the init function, the init method, which is always run when you instantiate uh, an object from a class. So uh, if we have the, our bear class, uh, our first method uh, should be the init. Um, and notice here that init takes self, but it also takes name. So when we create, um, when we instantiate a bare object, we should give it a name. Okay, so, so this, this code here just basically uh, um, it initiates with a name, and then when we, uh, when we run say hello, it says hello, my, I'm a bear, my name is, and then self.name. So if we do a equals bear, open and close parentheses, we'll get a trace back. Because it's looking for, uh, when we initialize, uh, an object of class bear is looking for a name. If we instead did a equals bear yogi, then that works. So a dot name, what's that going to give us? Yogi. A dot say hello. Uh, we'll say hello world, I'm a bear, my name is yogi. Python's way of creating. Uh, yes, I believe so. I, I don't. I'm not too familiar with with C concept. But. So, so if you if you called self that name here and you and it, it was never. Yeah, I mean, like, I didn't like, name, name class bear. I didn't declare data for name in, in the class. But I'm accessing self dot name. Mm -hmm. So that means that now the class itself will has the data in it. Because previously, when we did a dot name, it was only defined for name. Right? That's what we like to say. Uh, I'm not sure I understand your, your question. Yeah. What is the So, so if you did a dot name within the class, it wouldn't understand that because it has no notion of what a is. So, self is basically saying that anything that has been defined in the class. Yeah, before you 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 instantiated bear with a, you associated bear with right. a. Right. If you said a dot name, which from our understanding is 
it said that you add the name member to A. But is it only to A or is it all classes down? It's, it's only to A. So A is, I've instantiated A, which is an object of class bear. So now A is, uh, it's not the class, but it's, it's an object of, of that type. So now if A has a name. You can add members dynamically. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So if we set those names now, that class has you can set I'm assuming it's the same, correct? The class is set. Right. So if I do set those names, would that mean that the class is set now as a name here, the property and then you keep Okay, so you're saying in here if I if I put a self dot name but didn't actually define it as anything? This actually declares the data name. Now, if I instantiate there, like, in Yogi, in Yogi, whatever, will it still have the name that you know? Uh, oh, I see, I see. Um, it's because you're doing it in the initializer. Anytime you're initializing, it's going to create a self.name in that instance. So each time it's creating a new self.name. Because it's in that initializer, that it's making sure that all those things happen. Yeah, but it's only associated with that specific instance. Associated with the class itself. You can have class variables, but those need to be defined above the init state. So many examples of that in a minute. So, is that clear? That wasn't clear. Yeah, one more quick question there. So, so if I uh, have to get a new instance, I have to give it a name. In this case, yes, because init is looking for a name. Um, so if if we gave it no name, there was a trace back. But uh, can I go on and delete the name for a particular instance later? Yeah. So okay. if you did if you did now did del a dot name, you would delete that, and you could also do a dot name equals something else, redefine it. Okay, so maybe the examples will clarify some of these questions. So uh, this is the next slide, I think. So scope, now we can have global attributes um, and declare this before the init statement. So if we did population equals zero, this is now a global variable within the class A. Sorry, global attribute, not a variable. Um, so they are accessed very much in the same way using the dot, but um, using the class name instead of the instance name. So instead of doing self dot name, we do sorry self dot population. We do bear dot population to access the population. So it's not. This attribute is not defined for an instance of bear, it's defined for the bear class. And so if you, if you modify it in one instance, is it modified for all instances of that class? Yes, that's right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so that's the exact example that we'll show. Okay, so I guess then uh, define our say hello um, and print I'm a bear, my name is, and I am number blank. And so if we uh, if we run this, let's see. Um, uh, it's let's, not a number, or whatever. It's one of over many. Right. So I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you exactly 
what no, 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 he's right. It's, it's, it should say, I am, uh, there are this number in the bear population. Yeah. That's what say hello. Sure. Yeah. Sure. If it was called yeah, directly, that's right. if that's that right. method yeah. was called directly at the time of the init, then it would also be valid. Yeah, you're, you're, you're correct. So the way the way that we have this example set up, it works, but you're right. So okay, if we if we create an instance of bear called Yogi um, and say hello, it says hello world, I'm a bear. My name is Yogi. I'm number one. And so our population counter incremented by one, and his name is Winnie. We create another instance called called Winnie. Um, again, it goes to two. So you're right. So if we now call it again, a dot say hello, he would say I'm number two, he's number one. So it should say there are two bears in the population. But the way that you would deal with that is you would say in the init, you would say effectively what's the current population? So you'd say self dot um, you know uh, ID number is equal to bear dot population, and um, that wouldn't be changed as the um, as the population grows. Yeah. Is there any destroy method so you can reuse that? Yeah. Well, so we'll do that in the next lecture. Yeah. Okay. So right. The, so the population um, variable is incremented each time a new instance is created, and So again, we did create another one, increments to three. Uh, so, okay, so let, let's do some more examples just to make this a little more concrete. Uh, so here's a, suppose you're a zookeeper, we have three bears, and we need to take them to their shiny new habitat, uh, but our bear truck can only support 300 pounds. Doesn't seem like a very good bear truck. Um, so can you transfer the bears in just one trip? So how would we do this in object-oriented programming? Uh, we have our class bear. Uh, it has an init method. And now our init takes uh, self, as it always has to do, name, and weight. So we then declare self.name as name, self.weight is weight. And uh, Okay, so we can create A. So A has the name Yogi and weight 80. Uh, B has is name Winnie, weight 100. C is Bear Fon, uh, Fozzie, uh, weight 115. We can make a dictionary. So class instances can be treated just like, like any other data type. So we, here we have a, sorry, a, a list of, uh, of instances of class bear. <coughs> um, we can also iterate over this list. So if, uh, basically initialize total weight and for Z and my bears uh, add the weight of each of the bears. So just like uh, like all the, the operations we've been learning in the other lectures, we can um, treat instances of classes the same way. Uh, so it's total weight less than 300, true. So we can take the bears on our bear truck. OK, so here's a marginally more realistic scenario. Um, now a bear's weight can change when he or she eats and hibernates. So we need to have some methods inside of our class uh, of eating and hibernating. And those will modify the attributes weight. Okay, so this is just to show that object methods can alter other properties of the object. So this is an important point. Again, we have our class bear. We initialize it with uh, name and weight. And now we have um, we define eat. Uh, again, we need we need to pass in self and now an amount that we've eaten and. When we call eat, uh, our weight increases by increases or decreases by a certain amount. Uh, let's say we can uh, hibernate. 
And here, here Hibernate only has taken self. So each time we call Hibernate, our, our weight decreases by a factor of 1.2. Okay, so how do we do this in practice? Uh, we could an instance uh, of Yogi Bear with 80 pounds, Winnie, and Fozzie, and then we can have a list of these instances of, of the bear class. Uh, Yogi finds several picnic baskets to snack on. So Yogi's weight started as 80. Now uh, A.E. E. So Yogi eats 20 pounds worth of picnic baskets. And his weight now is 100. So Yogi's weight, so the attribute within um, uh, Yogi's instance of the bear class, can be modified by the method eat. So this way, methods and attributes can talk to one another. Uh, in the same way, uh, when he eats something, uh, Fozzie hibernates. And so we can see, now see if total weight is above 300 in the same way. And we see that it's false. So we can't load the bears on our bear chart. Okay, um, so we can also have instances of our classes talk to one another. So in this uh, example, now, okay, bears are social creatures, uh, they, they become friends, they can even change their behavior through their friendship. So now we initialize bear with a name, a favorite food, and a list of friends. Okay. So class instances can be passed in as, as arguments just like any other Python object. So uh, we can define a method called same food. And so this is going to determine whether or not a bear has the same favorite food as any of its friends. Okay, so here friends is a list of instances of bears. So we can iterate over that list and uh, figure out if that friend's favorite food is the same as my self dot favorite. And if so, we print that they both like the same food. Okay, so we instantiate Yogi. Winnie and Fozzie, uh, here they each like, their favorite foods are all different. Um, C has no friends, so Fozzie has no friends. So it's an empty list. Um, its favorite food is frog legs. Um, so when, you, when we do C dot same food, what should be returned? Nothing. It's empty. Because uh, Fozzie has no friends. Okay, so what if Fozzie made, made some friends? So now both Winnie and Yogi become friends with Fozzie. Um, but still, none of them like the same food. But over time, Fozzie acquires a taste for honey. Because honey is better than frog legs. Uh, Kermit is very happy. <laughs> and so when we do see that same food, both Fozzie and Winnie both like honey. So um, we can modify the attributes, so the, 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 uh, the list of friends as well as favorite foods. And when we rerun uh, these methods, the same methods, we can get a uh, different output. Okay, so uh, we'll do the breakout problem now. We're, gonna, we're actually going to pull off, we're going to do lunch now, and then we're going to do my lunch, and then we're going to do a breakout. Okay. So this breakout problem will be... Think about it over lunch. Here's it now. Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, the idea of this, this, this problem is that we want you to do it in object-oriented programming. So you'll want to make a class called Polygon 
which allows you to calculate the perimeter and the area, if you have enough time over lunch, uh, of a polygon provided the vector coordinates of its end vertices. And assume that the vector coordinates are in order. So think about how to do that. And enjoy your lunch. <laughs> <laughs>